artists to watch on Sunday. First, we're gonna start off with BB Tricks. It's just like uh, Spanish ice spice. Next up on the list, we have YG Marley. He only has one song out, he's been blowing up. And what's crazy is that his mom is Lauren Hill and his grandfather is the legendary Bob Marley. So bringing reggae to Coachella. Lauren Hill probably will come out. He's probably gonna sing some Bob Marley songs for sure. So that's a moment. And this guy, he's only has one song out. It's already blowing up. You know, music industry, you got all the connects. He's gonna have a successful career. So YG Marley, somebody to look at. It's goody. Hey, we right here with Angel Chavez. You already know what it is. Indio, but have a good time. For sure. Um, I've been following Eddie Zuko for a long time. Kind of reggae, kind of hip hop. This is your first hockey game or what? Yeah, I'm nervous. I don't know what to expect. <laughs> mistake on Friday's video I said taking back Sunday was gonna play on Friday but actually taking back Sunday is playing on Sunday rock is so much fun and I feel like festivals don't have enough rock these days Next up, we have Los Hermanos Gutierrez, all the way from Ecuador. Trying to find the melodies that goes or comes from the heart, from the soul. Our grandfather always told us that the sadness and the heart is something very important. It's more important than to feel the joy, because out of the sadness, the joy will come out. So, aquí va para nuestro abuelo, los chicos tristes. This is Atarashi Gako. I have this song called Tokyo Calling. The music video is super sick. We get a chance to see international artists. Next one, we have Nav. Into the Spider-Verse movie soundtrack with the song Calling. That's, that's the only reason I want to go see Nav. That song is so fire. I hope he plays it. He's going to have some guest performances. I like that kind of frequency of hip-hop. I don't know. I don't know. The Atlanta Metro Boomin sounds. I don't know. Karin Leon is the only artist this year at Coachella that's playing Coachella Weekend 1, Coachella Weekend 2, and Stagecoach. He has some really good dance songs, La Boda with La Coche, that went viral on TikTok. I got recommended by like three different people said if you have a chance to watch this Krongbin is this chill rock band It's gonna be like an immersive experience 
next we have Janae Eco. Back in 2022, Big Sean brought her out. Now back in 20, like 18, 2019, J Balvin was bigger than Bad Bunny. To be honest, he kind of fell off a little bit. Maybe this is his comeback. He is launching a tour right after Coachella's, which is smart. You know, a lot of artists do this. It says it's gonna be fun. It's Sunday, it's time to listen to reggaeton. Latinos are gonna pull up for J Balvin. We have the most polarizing DJ working right now. John Summit one day is gonna come back to Coachella and be a headliner in like a year or two. That's the trajectory he's heading. He's gonna be playing on Friday on doing the Everything Always set with Dom Dalla, and then he has his own set on Sunday, probably closing out the Sahara, maybe at the same time as Doja Cat. The next artist on the list is the headliner. On Sunday is Doja Cat. She just teased new music. She is the best or biggest female rapper in the game today. Some people say she doesn't deserve to headline. Other people are saying she is the best performer alive. She's amazing. To be honest, I skipped her set in 2022 so I could watch Nathan Cano. I like Mexican music, but it is the headliner with the biggest production budget. Next we have Anima. <laughs> Now, Anima was part of Tale of Us that played last year at the Sahara Tent, bringing that futuristic, robotic visuals. He's a character, like he's part of the Matrix, he connects to the machines. He's playing the music and there's gonna be insane visuals happening. So last year he played at the Sahara tent. I wonder if they're gonna put him on the main stage now so that way people could see the visuals. Like that's one of the shows that you have to see. You just have to see it. Expect people to be recording, but it doesn't matter. Like let people do whatever they want, I guess. And is the No Doubt reunion, Gwen Stefani and the band is back together. <laughs> Coachella, bringing back the reunions, of course. It's just nostalgic. It's like watching Blink-182 last year. I'm just a girl. <laughs> they haven't announced. They kind of teased they were going to play Sunday. <laughs> DJ is somebody else that's fire that's been to Coachella in the past, and that's DJ Snake. <laughs> He's a legend in the industry. He collabs with some of the biggest artists, so you could expect some guest performances. <laughs> Just overall, maybe the last time we'll ever get to see DJ Snake at Coachella. Lupe Fiasco is underrated, one of his most underrated rappers of his era. <laughs> Fresh, cool, young, little, trying to catch 
Um, Heineken House, it's a little bit small. The same thing with T-Pain. We're going to try to get in there for Lupe Fiasco. Coil Ray, uh, very polarizing. Hey, come on. I want to definitely see her set, um, if it makes sense. Somebody... Jamie XX, Floating Points, and Daphne doing a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back set, a three hours plus at the Quasar stage. <laughs> and it's three plus hours, so even if you watch, you know, 20, 30 minutes of it. At the new stage, it's gonna be super sick. Next up, we have the Rose. Well, maybe this is the moment where, like, if I see them live, then I become a fan or something. But I don't know. The Rose. I liked when they were fighting. I feel like that was the most exciting part for me. Oh, yeah. Fighter Birds won. My name's Angel. I'll be going to both Coachella weekends. So if you see me, say what's up. If you don't see me, what's up. And hopefully see you guys at Coachella.